Uh, following in that line, uh, I'm Peter from Google Cloud. Uh, we're on the confidential computing team, and I'm going to talk about DICE attestation for confidential VMs and maybe confidential containers and beyond. Does that work? Oh, good. Okay, so quick agenda. Talk about what the talk is, what DICE is, how we can use DICE with confidential computing, and what needs to be done if we want to do so. Um, so what is this talk? You know, I'd like to start a discussion around measured boot and attestation. I think lots of people here want to do that, so glad we're sh similar goals. Uh, here's a possible solution. Don't know if it's the best one or one we should work on, but you know, would like to talk about this here and uh, meet folks here interested in talking about this now and, and into the future as we start to build out this stuff. Um, so my goal is that users of confidential computing or confidential VMs can use attestation to verify their workload's code identity. So uh, what, I be, what I mean by this is, I think a lot of us here are familiar with attestation, but uh, for those that aren't, so attestation would allow a customer, so if they're running some code on a cloud provider, and they would like to, you know, remotely back on their on-prem, whatever, verify cryptographically that what they think is happening is, is actually happening. So that's 10,000 foot attestation. Um, code identity is that during that attestation flow, they would like to actually verify that, you know, I built this binary on my, my system, here's my container hash, here's my workload, and here's the hash that I got. When I run that on Google Cloud or whatever cloud, I wanna see that that hash, I can cryptographically prove that I'm running the binary I want to. So, so they're not running a version with a name, they can actually link, you know, the cryptographic attestation with some proof that they're running the code that they expect to be run and want to be running. Um, so here's where DICE comes in. It's an acronym for Device Identifier Composition Engine. Um, so this is a specification from the Trusted Computing Group, uh, same group that does the TPM that we're talking about a lot here. Uh, its goal is to provide security and privacy foundations for systems without a TPM. So it sounds a lot like our confidential VM environments or confidential computer environments. I know we can build TPMs, but they don't explicitly have a real physical one. So this, this could be an interesting thing for us to use. Um, and uh, yeah, so the results of this are an identifier which represents the combination of hardware and software of a device's boot sequence. So again, this seems like it helps us meet my goal of you know code identity. We, we can prove cryptographically that we're running that exact hash. Um, this is a relatively new standard, especially compared to TPM, but it, it's gaining a lot of traction. This is used on Android. You know, when you do Android does verify boot and you can actually, different Android processes can attest to each other using a DICE chain, which we'll talk about more. I know Microsoft and other IoT vendors are also investing in this as they might not have TPMs in all their deployments. So DICE is a layered approach, and, and we kind of get this thing that some people call DICE chain. So the boot or your runtime is typically divided into layers. We're all kind of familiar with that, so not a huge change. Um, so you know, on a typical Linux boot, we have an OVMF, we then run Grub, we then run into Linux, and then you know, we start our user space processes. So basically at a high level, each version, e each layer in DICE measures the next layer certifies that layer and then kind of cleans out its private state and then goes to the next layer. So, so a couple of terminology which might come up and if you read the specs over there, are the UDS or the unique device secret and the CDI, the compound device identifier. So, so the UDS makes a lot of sense when we're talking about IoT devices. They have physically different you know, identities. Um, this might make less sense in a cloud where you know, a server is running a couple thousand VMs or something. So, might might not play into our use case so much, but but is interesting. And the compound device identifier is, I think, what we're more interested in is, is a way to compound the identities of each boot layer into a new identity, which is the representation of all those boot layers. Um, and we'll dig into that. So what is actually the job of a layer? So the inputs from the layer are the outputs of a layer because you just rinse repeat the process for as many layers as you want to boot. So the inputs are the CDI of your layer and a device ID key pair. So this is your identity. This key pair is, if, if you're the boot layer, personifying the boot layer, then this key allows you to attest to what you are or you know certify new layers or certify what you'd like. Um, and also you have access to the code, configuration, 
some metadata about the next layer. A and you output, you output the CDI for that next layer and a um, certificate for that layer's device ID key. So here you can see a, a layer boots up, you have your CDI. Here you can you know, run that through KDF, you get your device ID uh, key pair. That has already been certified by the previous layer. So you can then you know, do what you need to do, set up memory, et cetera. Uh, you're ready to go to the next layer. You measure that layer. You add in some configuration. You make it, you know, that goes into the new CDI. So you've taken your CDI, mixed it through with the uh, info and, and measurement of that next layer. That is that next layer's CDI. And you can derive the key pair for that CDI and then use your device key to certify that CDI. Uh, then importantly, uh, if you don't have a secure place to store anything, which we, we probably don't in confidential community, in, in, in SMP or TDX, we might not have a secure place to store anything. So we can just zero out our CDI and zero out our device ID private key, not accessible to the next version. Uh, we package that all up for the next boot layer and, and we jump to it, you know, process repeats. This repeats on and on. And then what does our end state look like? So in our end state, the, the workload at the end has a device ID asymmetric key pair. Again, that is the identity of that workload. It has a, a certificate chain from zero to N layers of you know, its boot stack, which certify each layer up to itself the workload. So those layers, you know, zero to N, those are all certified, or um, you know, one to N, those are all certified by previous boot layers. Um, and then we get to the boot stage zero, which, which needs to be signed by the, the SOC, the device of some sort. So with SNP, this might be the ASP. With TDX, this could be uh, the, uh, you know, there's an SGX enclave there, which does the signature. And then typically that device will have another certificate chain back down, routing it to the vendor. So the device, the device ID gives the workload the ability to attest its identity you know, cryptographic identity to remote parties. So that seems like it, it meets the goal that I'm, I'm trying to work towards. We also do, as a little bonus, we do have a CDI still, and we can, we can run that through KDFs. And if we'd like, we could probably do sealing with that too. So, you know, th there's multiple use cases here. Um, so here is a simple Linux dice flow. Uh, you know, I think there's a good amount of trade-offs between secure boot, TPMs, and DICE, and maybe in more ephemeral, stateless use cases, DICE might be more suited because of its simplicity versus a TPM. So, so here I've, I've illustrated a, a pretty simple, this is, this is very similar to, I think, the, the Kata containers that were presented yesterday at KVM forum. So, you know, boot through OVMF, that's the boot layer zero. We can then go to a, you know, an EFI stub, an RAMFS with a, with a Docker, or, you know, some sort of container runner. That's our next boot layer. And then we can actually, we can actually fork the boot layer. So easy example, you know, the second layer, you know, some Rust container a customer's written, some Go container they've written. You know, we have two and we have two prime for this EL. You, you know, you can fork because, as layer one is measuring the Rust container and the Golang container, it's then just generating two different CDIs, one for each container, and sets it up for those containers to run. Before it runs either, it needs to clear out its state. Um, yeah, so here is, is you know, very simple AMD uh, SNP specific version of what that certificate chain looks like. So I've abstracted all of AMD's VKEC certificate chain. Um, but you can read about that online. So that certifies basically the uh, AMD secure processor. So that's our hardware uh, measurer. So the OVMF, you know, the first step in this boot, um, the ASP measures and you know signs the the you know the identity of that, the hash of the OVMF, and its device ID key with its its key there. Um, and then we can measure that kernel and container image that we have a nice certificate there leading to the container certificate. And then our last block here is, you know, the container can then use its device identity to, you know, sign any user data that comes in. So you could build some arbitrary cryptographic protocol off this, you know, maybe MTLS or something interesting here. Um, so let's dig into this a bit. So when we're looking at, you know, how do we validate this is right? So, you know, we got a lot of layers to validate, but, the, you know, the cert chain from the hardware vendor, that's all the same 
no matter what we do. So we'll, we'll start at the first layer of the device chain. So uh, first we wanna validate that our OVMF binary is acceptable. So in, in DICE, the, you know, one of the trade-offs we're making is each layer is a certifying authority. So its certificates are only as good as that code is. So we wanna check that, you know, is this OVMF one that we can trust? There's no CVEs pending, et cetera, et cetera. We built it maybe, maybe someone's endorsed it, some audit has happened. Check, check that that hash is good. And then, you know, we wanna check that the signer is good. The signer in this case uh, is the uh, ASP. Check that that VKEC checks out, it's the latest one, it's the, it's the one that we want. Is that ASP trustworthy? If so, good, we then can trust this device, this OVMF's device ID to further certify statements. So uh, the next thing is, you know, we're trusting that device ID key. It has signed a certificate for that kernel, uh, that kernel's device ID key. Um, we can look at that, verify the signature, and then we can verify, like we did on that OVMF, that this, uh, you know, EFI stub, this init RAMFS, this all looks good to us, and, and we can continue the process up another step to towards the workload. Rinse, repeat until we get to the workload. Um, but how do we get kind of the, the layer zero is unfortunately where we're gonna have to do a little work on each vendor. So the layer zero can abstract the hardware vendor differences. So anything above layer zero luckily gets to run exactly the same. So it does help us minimize vendor specific code, which is a nice property. So as an example of our layer zero on SMP, we, we can use the, the get key uh, command for the guest to talk to the ASP for a CDI. So the, the, the get key command, while not written to be a CDI, actually meets the hardware specification by the TCG for a CDI. So, uh, you know, lucky for us, you know, we can, there's a lot of different options we can do to that CDI. We can bind it to the hardware itself, whereas that UDS concept makes sense. So, okay, I'm actually attesting to, I'm running on that physical server, et cetera, um, or we can do it based on a, a VM root key. Uh, you know, there's a couple options there, but uh, yeah. So VM gets the, does the get key, gets its CDI zero. From CDI zero, you know, we can derive a uh, device ID key and then use the quoting feature from the ASP to generate a, you know, it's, it's not an X509 certificate, but it is a certificate of some kind of that device ID key. So this is where the difference would be from a TDX or SCV. SCV might have to do this layer differently or, you know, one arm has a, a functionality. So this is where our differences are. You know, we get the quote. The quote gives us a signature over our uh, device ID key and has the measurement of the OVMF. So this is our first uh, DICE certificate. And then we can continue up the chain as we would for any um, any different hardware vendor boot. Um, so what do we have? What needs updating? So luckily for us, the Android folks have been working on this for a while. We already have the dev open dice driver. Um, this is kind of just a, a very simple driver. It, it allows us to get the, you know, the raw dice bytes from the previous layer to user space. So in the, in the example, that simple device flow, that would allow the init RAM FS, you know, some binary in there, could use open, open uh, dice to pull out the, you know, its dice inputs from the previous layer, do its, uh, do its dice layer, and then go to the next workload. So, you know, there's no nothing in OVMF or Grub or, or anything else distro specific. So there would be a lot of lift here compared to, you know, adding a TPM, uh, but we, we do have a starting point. Um, so a quick recap, Dyf gives us workload ID device key pairs. So, you know, a cryptographic identity based in each layer's, um, you know, in each layer's code, uh, which is a pretty strong statement. Uh, Dice has, uh, you know, we have hardware identity. The device ID can perform remote attestation. And this involves no further, you know, one benefit here is we're, we're limiting our chatter to the ASP. We use that device ID key to be our identity for talking to remote identity. So we don't reach back into the SP, which is you know, a limited resource on the system, an another advantage. And also this can be used in place of a TPM, but there are, there are also some, you know, like the ceiling example, this can also complement a TPM. So I don't know if it's an either or, um, there are some advantages to both. So, you know, little diagram, we can root a confidential VM's device ID, MTLS, 
to a customer certificate, which which is a pretty interesting story. Um, and yeah, thank you for coming. L let's discuss on the list, get in touch directly. And, and there's the specification in the open dice code from, from Android. So any questions, I guess. Uh, I have a question. Uh, could you tell us shortly what kind of changes do you need uh, to do in the grab to support the head dice? I, could you repeat that? Yes, of course. Uh, could you uh, tell us shortly what kind of changes uh, you have to do in grab to support that dice? Sure. Um, so dice is a very loose standard from TCG. Open dice is a standard from the Android folks to give it a bit more specification, you know, it defines the Seabor certs. So they do provide C code, so it might just involve linking in that C code to do the dice layer. It does. It has all the you know the KDFs and the certificates and things like that. So it's you know getting the input from OVMF, running that C code, putting the output for the next layer somewhere. Okay, makes sense. Uh, how uh, the C code is licensed? The C code is licensed. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't actually know. I I think it might be MIT. Um, Okay, I can get, get back to you. Thanks a lot. Question on the approach. So is the main thing which you're hoping to kind of achieve with this DICE approach is the unification of attestation between vendors? Because I, I'm not familiar with I'm the approach currently like on attestation, but uh, I'm expecting that they also have it working, like an, or at least working. And TDX is also able to kind of provide you all the goals that you have here. But of course, it's going to be TDX specific the way it's done. And I guess in MD case, it's going to be MD specific. So is this main goal is to just make it like uniform, but you don't have to, you basically, as you said, like you only do this one layer and then you're hoping to build all the things and hope which is vendor independent? So vendor, in the, the question was, is my main goal vendor independence? Uh, that's not the, the main goal is is a way for customers to get that that code identity. Um, I think that we all can write pretty good attestation libraries that customers can audit and use. So, so I, I think that the vendor independence can happen at a couple different places. I, I think that's one advantage. You know, one nice thing here is the only thing that is vendor specific is that layer zero, and then the the remote verifier needs to to have vendor specifics. I know that this won't work in TDX, or I believe it it won't. If someone knows how to make it work in TDX 1.0, I'd like to know. But I don't think we have ceiling capabilities in TDX, so it might not work for that. Um, for some Cloud VM kind of stuff, um, where is the benefit over using a virtual TPM? The equivalent, or is that like, why would I use this? Yeah, I think, you know, the TPM and DICE have very similar goals. The TPM is one way of giving you a cryptographic identity. This is a different way. Um, right. We don't currently have a TPM for SMP. I know that, that we're working on one. One advantage could be, you know, if you prefer having a much smaller uh, TEE, you don't want to link in an SVSM. This is a way for you to get this security without linking that in. You, you, you can have less layers, less code. And the, the, I think the SVSM could implement DICE if, if you'd like to use that for ceiling, et cetera. So uh, I think it's a, it's a trade-off. All right, to, uh, building off of the last two questions, if we had VTPM or whatever TDX is doing today, which Elena just said we do, like, and if we could get the full measured boot out of those today, would we still want to do the dice? Like you mentioned maybe less code or like the trade-offs are not, and the summary of the trade-offs of the two are not obvious. So I'm just curious if we had that all today, would you still be proposing this? And if so, why? Um, yeah, I, I think that we do have use cases where the less code is nice and not having to, you know, if you're in, in that simplified use case, you're not a typical distro boot, you're something new, you're a Kata container, you're some other, you know, smaller use case. So the TPM specification, how the PCRs are used isn't relevant to you. So something simpler may be, may be, easy for you, may, may be easier for you. Um, you also do have the, the forking of the capability. I don't know if such a thing is possible with the TPM because everything's loaded into the same PCRs. Hi. Um, so we'll soon have like four different 
types of measurements that are taking place uh, in GRUB, in EFI stub, for uh, normal TPM, for TDX, for DICE maybe, there's the DRTM stuff uh, that's coming. Is there a way we could kind of abstract this in, the, in, in this particular case? Uh, do you think the DICE machinery could be exposed to the firmware, to the loader, uh, in the same way as the TCG protocols uh, currently expose the measuring interface? Um, I'm I'm not sure I fully under the question, understand the question, but can we abstract this into the current TCG code in Grub and EFI stub? So so basically, what the EFI stub well, uh, the EFI stub now does some of it, uh, but Grub already has this code uh, out of three, where it will measure stuff by grabbing the TCG protocol from EFI and use that as an abstract thing to measure. It doesn't know about the TPM. It doesn't know about what goes on under the hood. So it would be very useful if we could have an abstraction where you say, okay, this is something that is important enough that I need to measure it. If, if we could abstract that in a way that it's up to the firmware or whatever uh, underlies it to decide how to implement the interface without being aware at the caller level that, oh, this is a DICE measurement. Oh, this is a TPM measurement. Oh, this is a TDX measurement. Oh, this is a DRTM measurement. To have some kind of uniformity there so that we don't have an explosion of code uh, in those uh, boot layers. Yeah, I, I think that's good to be mindful of. I, I'm not familiar with the grub code, but if there is already an abstraction layer to hide all of the different attestation layers, I, I think this should probably play well into that, but I'm happy to chat offline. I think we're out of time. Okay, so thanks for the lively discussion. Um,